What's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. This should be a quick one. So Herman Holst, you know, head of uh, PlayStation First Party Studios, has made a comment um, clarifying and um, further elaborating on PlayStation strategy when it comes to games as a service and live service games. And being that I'm one of the people who actually believe in live service games and, um, you know, I guess I'm a I'm a games as a service advocate, as some people see me as. Um, it made sense for me to make this video and just talk about it very briefly, because there are a lot of people who believe that, you know, live service games are just the bane of uh, the, the gaming industry's, um, you know, uh, the bane of the gaming industry itself, and that the model of live service games are just like inherently destined to fail. And they, you know, the whole situation um, is just a bad idea and all of them should fail. There are some people who are that extreme, right? And I just think that's completely ridiculous. I, I think that's stupid. I think live service games are a great thing when done right. And there are clear examples of it um, being very un unoffensive and being great for the gamer when it's done right. Are there way more failures? Of course, because it's it's still a an infant. The the concept of live service games are really still an infant in the gaming industry, if you think about it. So a lot of people have gotten it wrong um, because they the industry is really still learning, and it, it's it's it is a complex complex matter. But you know, I'm just not one of those who believe it's just this thing that's destined to fail and it's inherently bad. I think that's just nonsense. Um, but to Herman Holt's comments. He said, we understand the competitive environment that is out there and the time investment from players that live service offers. Uh, just to comment on that real quick, that's one of the things that a lot of people say is the trickiest thing about live service games. It's not, a lot of people believe it's not necessarily getting people to be interested in your game. It's, it's, the, it's the time suck that it requires to keep your game alive. You need um, you know, you constantly need players and you constantly need those players to invest time in your games. These live service multiplayer games, um, you know, they, they need those uh, concurrent, that concurrent user base every day. Those monthly active users, those those are when, you know, engagement numbers actually matters. It matters when it comes to multiplayer live service games. Um, so I it's good to hear that he actually knows that because most people will tell you that's the trickiest thing is trying to get a player who already invests so much time into one game to get them to spend that that time in in your game. Um, so he goes on to say, and we want to deliver the highest quality uh, in live service games that he's talking about the same mentality. And this is all stuff that I've that I've said, right? Just reading this article. It's all stuff that I've already said that I believe should be their path to success when it comes to live, live service games. There's, I've said so many times before, if PlayStation puts the same type of effort and quality into their single player games that they put into these, that if they put the, the same quality and effort into these uh, live service games that they already put into their single player games, I think that increases their chance of success by, by margins. That's something that I've, Oh, that I've said in the many arguments I've had on Weapon Wheel and, uh, you know, with 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 other people. He goes on to say there is a risk uh, that we talk about uh, live service games in generic terms as if it's a single genre or even a single business model. That's another thing that people seem to think that live. So when people think of a live service game, they have an idea in their head of what that looks like. and the and the people who have made live service games they are partially to blame for that because they've done this thing where they kind of like just make this one generic type of game um as a live service game it has it, like a live service game it has this certain aesthetic it has this certain look it has this certain play style so the the people who have actually uh, ventured into this um, li live service and games as a, as a service lane, they're partially to blame for gamers believing that it has to look a certain way, play a certain way, be designed a certain way, and, and so on and so forth. Um, 
So he said PlayStation Studios are making a variety of games that could be referred to as live services, targeting different genres. So all these live service games that they've talking they that they are planning, what is it, 10? They're not going to be the same, the same genre, uh, different release schedules. They're not going to come out all at the same time because people have, you know, talk, talked about that. Like, why are you making so many? And because I, I think Jim Ryan, he did say like, Oh, uh, in the, in the next, I forgot how many amount of years we plan to release a certain amount of live service games, and that makes it sound like they're just all gonna come out one after another within a cert, with a small with a, within a small window, and I don't think that's actually gonna be the case. Uh, but he said targeting different genres, uh, different release schedules, and different scales. Another thing I've talked about. I don't. I people automatically assume that like these live service games are going to all be like triple a when and and all of them are not even go, going to be like first party right P, i think people really have the wrong idea of what these games are actually going going to be like and i'm glad he's clarifying um all all of these statements they're not all going to be the same genre they're not all going to release at the same time they're not all going to be like triple a uh you know and and be these giant you know type type of games you know that 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 type of shit some some of them are going to be smaller smaller in scale and uh and and in scope um so that you know and that and that obviously makes sense we are also creating games for different audiences and i take confidence from our track record in creating worlds and stories that playstation fans love and um he goes on to say that, you know, he, he wanted to clarify that they're not just making um, Fortnite and, uh, and, and, and Bungie type, type live service games, right? Because that's what people, uh, once again, automatically, automatically think about. Um, you know, they're, that's, that's not their intent. They're not making 10 different Fortnites and 10 different Destinies. He, 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 makes, that, he makes that very clear. And that's, one of, that's another thing. I mean, listen, I know I'm patting myself on the back, but I've said all this stuff before this man has even even said it. If you want to make a successful live service game, you can't make a Fortnite adjacent game. You can't make another you can't make another Destiny. You can't make another Call of Duty. Even outside of live service games, if you want to make a game that that can compete with these other games, the worst thing you can possibly do is make another game like that game. Because if people want to play Fortnite, they're not going to look, look for a Fortnite clone. They're just going to play Fortnite. If people want to play Destiny, they're not going to look for another game just like Destiny. They're just going to play Destiny. Because most, most times when someone tries to make a competitor just like it, you're not going to be as good as the originator. Try, if you're trying to make, if you're trying to make something that can compete and i'm using these terms very loosely compete and i think compete should really be worded as if you're trying to make another option in the in the same lane as these games you have to make it different it can't be just like these games because people will be like oh i'm just gonna play the original game uh, i think a a big key to success and i've said this many times is you have to create something unique and different that's not already already available on the market as far as like the type of genre. Um, like let's take Twisted Metal for example. T Twisted Metal is definitely is probably going to be one of their live service games. Is Twisted Metal going to be successful? Don't know. But one thing I know that Twisted Metal has going for it is there is no other game like it, specifically live service game or game in general like it out there. If somebody wanted to play a vehicular combat game, you really don't have any option. There is none. So when Twisted Metal comes out, that's really going to be the only option for that type of game. Will people still still want to play that game? That type of game that remains to be seen. But the fact that you are creating a unique experience and it's going to be different and the only one available, that's that's an advantage. That's a big that's a big advantage. You have to you have to um, answer a, a and and um, and you have to pretty pretty much create a if there's a need you have to create create that answer for it. 
there's a void in the industry for a, cer a certain type of game, it, it, would be it would behoove you if you're making a live service game to identify that gap and then fulfill it. I think that would that would really help, and I think that's part of their part of their strategy. Uh, they have unique IPs and yada yada yada. That that works for them. Um, and one of the advantages that I don't think um, people think about is yeah, there's been a lot of failures at at live service games, but that's to PlayStation's advantage because they can look at there there are there are clear. Uh, there are clear success stories when it comes to live service. And then there's clear failures. There's no, there's no really like in between when it comes to live service and games as a service games. There's no like, oh, it's, it's, it's mildly success. It, it's kind of like two extremes. You're, it either completely fails or it, it's, a, it's a runaway success for the most part. You know, some stuff is, some stuff is like a little, like, like nothing is really just as successful as, as Fortnite or COD in the live service space, right? But you you got like something lesser than that in another tier that's that's still very successful, and you kind of gotta you kind of gotta know that, you know that's one of the things that they um that they have to see and realize. Look at all look at all the games that have failed in the live service space, and we have to realize, okay, what did they do? We gotta not do that. Look at the successes, see what they did and didn't do. And, and do that so you have to copy like the template but but the game has to be unique and that's that's you know i'm beating a dead horse that's stuff i've said like so many times in different videos and different conversations but point is um I, I think this is very encouraging to hear like i said i'm i'm i just believe this live service stuff can work that doesn't mean i think every one of them is going to be a success but I don't think it's I, I I just don't believe this nonsense that a lot of people believe that live service games are just destined to fail and all of them are going to be all, all of them are going to be dead and, and, and garbage and, and complete failures. I just do not believe that. I believe that the industry was just learning what to do and what not to do. And early on, a few got it right. A lot got it wrong. And it's 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 kind of trial and error. It's it's a, an experimental thing. And a lot are just learning. So, um, yeah, this was uh, this was encouraging to hear about the different genres. Um, they know they can't just copy, uh, you know, f Fortnite and, and, and Destiny. And that that's with gameplay, as aesthetics, all, all those things. And they know they have to put the um, the, the same effort they put into, into, into their single player games. They got to put into this live service stuff, too. Um, something I do worry about is like them is the is the the ongoing support because you need a lot of staff to create seasons and, and content. It's that's, that's definitely not easy. Um, so I, I'd have no, I, I don't really, I don't, I'm not as doubtful that they can create a live service game that can attract people. Um, and even keep people for a while, but I don't know if if y'all have the, I guess the manpower as much to create co the content, the, the, the constant content and updates like a Fortnite does or something like something like that, that often, right? But we'll see. Let me know what y'all think about this. Uh, I'll catch y'all on the next video. I'm out. Peace.